Hey guys, Mythos Gamer. Welcome back for turn number six. As usual, before we get started, we'll take a look at Arkham. Over on the north side, we have Patrice in the street area. In the downtown area, we have a gate to the Great Hall of Salino and a formless spawn over at Independent Square. Nothing going on over in the East Town area. Over in Rivertown, Agnes is at the Black Cave. In the Merchant District, we have a clue token at the Unnameable, and the Wizard Watley is in the streets. At Miskatonic University, we have a clue token at the Science Building. At the French Hill, we have a sealed gate at the Silver Twilight Lodge. And at the Witch's House, we have a gate to relay, being guarded by a warlock. Over in the south side, we have two clue tokens at the Historical Society. And in our last area, the Uptown, we have a gate at the woods going to another dimension with a Night Gaunt and a Wraith. Alright, we are going to pass the first player marker from Hank over to Daisy and move on to our upkeep phase. During our upkeep, the only thing we're going to do is roll for Daisy's Blessing. We need to roll anything but a 1. And we rolled a 6, so Daisy will get to keep her Blessing for another turn. And that is all we're doing for our upkeep. So we're moving on to our movement phase now. Our first player, Daisy, is in the first area of her lay. So she's going to move into the second area. Next we have Patrice with a speed of 4. So she's going to move from the north side streets over to the downtown streets. And then up to Independence Square, where there's a gate to the Great Hall of Selena and a formless spawn. And she's going to fight the formless spawn. The formless spawn has minus one to horror checks, doing two sanity damage, minus two to combat checks, doing two stamina damage, two toughness, and physical immunity. For our horror check, Patrice has a will of one, and she also has the will skill give you another plus one so with the minus one from the formless spawn she's going to roll one die and if we use any clue tokens we'll get to add two dice and she got the success that she needed so no sandy loss now we'll move on to combat Patrice has a fight of four and a lore of five We're going to attempt to cast her Shriveling spell as a modifier minus one. So she is going to roll four die. It's going to cost her one sanity, bring her down to four sanity. Let's see if we get a success. We got that success. So she successfully cast the spell. We're going to exhaust shriveling. It'll give her plus six to combat checks. And it only uses one hand. So we're also going to use her enchanted knife. This gives her another plus three. So we have three from the enchanted knife, six from shriveling, and four from her fight skill. That gives her 13 die. Then minus two from the formless spawn. She's gonna roll 11 die and needs two successes. Here are our first six die. And there are the two successes we need. So she will kill the formal spawn, giving her two more monster trophies. Brings her up to a total of three toughness worth. Our third investigator, Agnes, over at the Black Cave, has a speed of four. So she's going to leave the Black Cave and go to the Rivertown streets. 
from there she's going to go down to the French Hill Streets then she's going to leave the French Hill Streets and head to the South Side Streets then she's going to leave the street area and head to the Historical Society where she will pick up two clue tokens bringing her up to a total of eight and our final investigator Hank is finally going to get to leave another dimension and he will come out of the gate in the woods because he just came out of the gate he will not have to fight the wraith or the night gaunt until next turn alright that is it for our movement phase we're going to move on to our Arkham Encounters phase Patrice is over at Independent Square, and because she is on a gate without an Explorer token, she will get pulled through the gate, and she will end up in the first area of the Great Hall of Selena. Our next investigator, Agnes, is at the Historical Society, so we will draw an encounter card. A monster appears and attacks you as you approach the front door. Well, that's not good. Let's see what kind of monster attacks us. And we drew a dimensional shambler. He has a minus three to sneak. And for combat, he gives minus two to horror checks, doing one sanity damage. He does minus two to combat checks. If you fail a combat check against him, you are lost in time and space, which with Yogg's Thoth being our ancient one, means that you are devoured. So we definitely do not want to lose combat check to him and he has one toughness. For our horror check, Agnes has a will of zero, so she's going to take a sandy damage, bring her down to three, and for combat, let's take a look what Agnes has. Agnes has a fight of four and a lore of six. She's going to use her lore of six to attempt to cast the wither spell. It has a modifier of plus zero and costs zero sanity. So she's going to roll six die, needs one success. And she got multiple successes, so she will successfully cast it. The wither spell gives her additional plus three to combat checks. And because of her memories of conquest ability, She'll get another plus one because the spell is one-handed. So with her fight of four, and then plus four from the wither spell, it gives her a combat rating of eight, minus two from the dimensional shambler. She's gonna roll six die, and needs one success. And she got multiple successes, so she will kill the dimensional shambler, giving her one toughness worth of monster trophies, bringing her up to a total of five toughness of monster trophies. And our last investigator in Arkham, Hank, is going to attempt to close the gate to another dimension. Now Hank could use his Elder Sign to go ahead and automatically close and seal the gate, but because another dimension is one of the easier gates to close and seal, and Hank has five clue tokens. I think we're going to hold on to the Elder Sign for now. And we're just going to try and do it the old-fashioned way. The Gate to Another Dimension has a plus zero to close. For Hank's skills, he has a fight of five and a lore of zero. Obviously, we're going to use his fight. So we're going to roll five die. And we need two successes to close the gate. And we only got one success. So we're going to have him use one of Patrice's clue tokens to roll another die and hopefully get another success. And did not get a success. I think we're going to have to use another clue token from Patrice and roll again. And there's our success. 
Cost us two more clue tokens, but I think it's worth it. Hank is also going to use the five clue tokens he has to seal the gate. Hank will gain another dimension as a gate trophy. This will give him one gate trophy and one toughness of monster trophies. Normally we would remove any monsters that have the square symbol on them, but right now there are no monsters on the board with a square. Alright, we had a pretty successful Arkham Encounters phase. We closed and sealed our second gate. So now we move on to our other World Encounter phase. First we have Daisy in the second area of Relay. We're going to need a red or yellow or the World Encounter card. Okay, we drew a red one and Relay is not on there, so we go to Other. Struggling to hold your breath, you cannot seem to find the surface of the mysterious sea. Lose one Sandy and one Stamina. Not a good one, but it could be worse. Uh, this will bring her down to four Sanity and four Stamina. Next we have Patrice in the Great Hall of Selena. We need a blue or green Otherworld Encounter card. And the first one we drew was green, and Selino is on there. Professor Laban Strewsbury shows you some of the secrets of the Great Library. Gain two clue tokens. That's definitely a good one, especially for being Patrice, because she can share her clue tokens. This will bring her from seven clue tokens back up to nine. That is the end of our other world encounter phase, so we're moving on to our mythos phase. All right, our Mythos card says we're going to place a gate and a monster at the Witch House. Unfortunately, we already have a gate at the Witch House, so we're going to have a monster surge. There are only two gates on the board, Relay and Great Hall of Selena. And because we have four players, we're going to be drawing four monsters. There are currently four monsters on the board. So we're going to be placing two on Relay, one at the Great Hall of Selena, and then our last monster will go into our outskirts because we're going to be exceeding our limit. Our first monster for Relay is a Dark Young. It has a minus two to sneak checks. He gives plus zero to horror checks, doing three sanity damage, minus one to combat checks, doing three stamina damage, three toughness, Physical Resistance, Nightmarish 1, and he's the yellow monster so he doesn't move. We'll have him and the Warlock both staying put at the Witch House, guarding the gate. And our second monster for the Relay Gate is a Fire Vampire, a flying monster with plus zero to sneak check. He does not require a horror check, but for combat, minus two. Doing two stamina damage, he has one toughness, ambush, and physical immunity. And for our gate at the Great Hall of Selena, we drew another Dark Young. And for our final monster that's going in our outskirts, we drew an Elder Thing. Next, a clue will appear at the Black Cave. And now for monster movement. Surprisingly, with seven monsters on the board, we only have one monster that is a moon or a cross. Our Wraith is a moon monster, but because he's at the woods with our investigator Hank, he will not be moving away. So, no monsters will move this turn. And now for the text of our Mythos card. We got an Environment card. The Man in Black. Investigators who in their movement in the provincial streets may deal with the Man in Black to gain power. They roll dice equal to their current sanity, and for every failed die, they lose one sanity. If this reduces them to zero sanity, they are devoured. 
and the player must start a new character. Otherwise, they gain one clue token and draw one spell. Not a bad environment card. Um, all we have to do is not end our movement to Prince Hill Streets, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. However, because we did draw a Mystic Environment card, we're going to have to deal with our Herald, Roth. Roth has the Looming Omens ability. Each time an Environment card is drawn from the Mythos deck, every Investigator must either spend one clue token, or else the first player rolls a die and consults the chart below. Well, Hank and Daisy have zero clue tokens. They could use some of Patrice's, but with Patrice and Agnes being our only ones with clue tokens, I think we're just going to have to roll on the chart. If we get a 1, everyone loses a Sanity. If we get a 2, everyone loses a Stamina. 3 and 4, no effect. On a 5, the Terror level increases. And on a 6, we add Doom token to the Doom track. And we got a 5. Definitely not what we wanted. So our Terror level is going to go up. Because our terror level is going up, we have to deal with our other herald, the king in yellow. He has the yellow sign ability. Every time the terror level increases, the investigators must do one of the following. Place a yellow sign token on the terror track in a space just vacated by the terror marker. Or, place a yellow sign token on the doom track as over his doom token. Right now, our doom track is getting pretty full and we're trying to close and seal enough gates before Yox of Thoth wakes up. So I think we have no choice except to put a yellow sign marker on the terror track. Because we're putting a yellow sign token on a terror track, we have to draw a random blight card and place it into play. And our luck just gets worse and worse. For our Blight card, we drew Velma. The tear level is increased by one, triggering another yellow sign. I still don't want to place a yellow sign on the Doom track. So we're going to put another one on the tear track and draw another Blight card. And for our second Blight card, we drew Maul Matheson. Discard all allies from play. Ma's boarding house is closed for the rest of the game. Wow, so we're going to lose Anna, Patrice's ally, and we're going to lose Thomas, Daisy's ally, and we'll put a close marker on Ma's boarding house. Additionally, because our terror track went up twice, we have to discard two allies. Now we can't use Maul's boarding house for the rest of the game, but this does affect things like encounter cards. So we are discarding Earl Sawyer and Karina Jones. All right guys, that is the end of our turn. It started off pretty good. We were killing some monsters and we sealed a gate. And then we got to our mythos phase and the game just totally wrecked us. Uh, we had a monster surge, we had two tokens put on our terror track, so two blight cards, our two heralds just kept chaining off of each other. It's pretty rough. Uh, game's not over yet though, we're definitely going to see uh, what we can do. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you guys on turn 7.